I'm Jeff Mender, a certified project management professional, and I am here to share with you the four most important secrets to passing the PMP exam. There's the four secrets. Secret number one is you have to comprehend the PMBOK. Now the PMBOK is a project management body of knowledge. Comprehension is the next higher level of learning than knowledge. I'm going to tell you the secret as it applies to Bloom's Cognitive Taxonomy. The secret number two is use page 61 of the PMBOK as a methodology for managing projects, not just as a reference to the chapters. Secret number three is realize that you have to be in a projectized organization mentally, meaning you're the project manager who's in charge of everything in a projectized organization, and all the questions that you answer on the PMP exam prep are based on that fact. And secret number four is you do have to visualize a true methodology on how an idea becomes a project, how the project gets a charter created for it, how you accept that project through the project management office, and then how you manage all ten of the knowledge areas through the five process groups to successfully turn that idea into a real project service or result. So for the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to share with you all four of those secrets. The first one, comprehend the PMBOK. Now, Bloom's Cognitive Taxonomy, which came out in the, in the 50s, shows levels of learning at the lowest level being the knowledge level of learning. So we gain knowledge by reading, by seeing, by hearing teachers talk. Knowledge is simply garbage in, garbage out. The ability to repeat that with, you, uh, with what you just heard or write down things that you just saw. The next level of learning is comprehension. You have to take all those pieces of knowledge and figure out how they fit together to form a whole. That's comprehension and that's what you have to do with the PMBOK. The PMBOK is a project management body of knowledge. That's why it makes no sense to read it from cover to cover. You have to put the pieces together by applying it, the third highest level of learning, then you will fully comprehend what's in the PMBOK and be able to actually answer the questions that are in the PMP exam because they're written against the analysis and application levels of learning. So they wrote the tests questions against Bloom's Cognitive Taxonomy, and I've now put together a course that teaches you project management using Bloom's Cognitive Taxonomy. So that's the next secret in passing the PMP exam. Now, secret number two is page 61 of the PMBOK. You'll see that the PMBOK itself, or the body of knowledge, is written from chapter 4 through chapter 13 across the knowledge areas of, the, of, uh, of what a project manager has to know to be successful. My course is written across the five process groups that are across the top. So if you read the PMBOK chapter 4, you're reading about integration management from A to Z. But if you have to actually apply project management in actual practice, you actually get your charter first, then you identify your stakeholders, which is all the way down in chapter 13. So as you'll see, the PMBOK is written chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6 across the process groups, but you actually run a process up uh, from the top to the bottom and from left to right. The initiate process group, the, the planning process group, the ed, uh, execute process group, the monitor controlling process group, and the closing process group. I'll show you how to think about project management using this process that you can actually treat as a methodology that is page 61 of the PMBOK. Secret number three. You, are, you have to know that you're in a projectized organization when you answer the questions on the PMP exam. Remember, you're probably in a functional organization today. You see the silos. That's where your marketing department is separate from your IT department, separate from your uh, sales department, separate from your finance department. That's siloed. That's a functional organization. On the other side of that is a projectized organization where project managers run the organization. You have a permanent team assigned to you uh, for specific projects. You're in charge of that team. You make human resources uh, uh, decisions on a, a part of that team. You make hire and firing decisions. You decide who makes money and who doesn't make money uh, or make money. You decide everybody's schedule. They can't be pulled off your project to work other jobs. So you have to visualize yourself in that level of authority because every question that's asked of you on the PMP exam is based on that fact. You're the boss. 
So that is secret number three to passing the PMP exam. And secret number four is you have to visualize a true methodology uh, from how that project becomes or that idea becomes an actual project in an organization. And I've developed one for you as you see here. So an idea comes into the organization, it runs through the triple constraint of scope, time, and cost. You get a level of about 25 to 35 percent confidence in the scope, time, and cost. It then goes to a steering committee where they'll conduct a feasibility study, which runs through the requirements gathering to get a little more detail about the project idea. They then go to, uh, for request for proposal, request for information, or assign that to the internal organization. A project charter is then created based on all that data. The project charter then is passed off to the project management office, who is in charge of all the project managers. They look at existing port the portfolio, the existing programs, and existing projects to see if this new idea, this charter, fits into something already being run by the organization. If it does, they put it as a change request into that existing scope of an existing project, or they start a brand new project and they give the new project manager that charter, and then he follows everything that's on page 61 of the PMBOK as an internal project processes methodology. So I've shared the four secrets to passing the PMP exam. Visit jeffminder.com and I've got more videos there that explain every one of these elements in a deeper format. And you can also subscribe to the entire video library of educational videos, minute menders that help your project teams become stronger and better performers. Uh, you'll get access to the videos, the eight reasons uh, projects fail and how to more effectively manage clients, how to more effectively manage sponsors, motivate your project team. But everything's there at jeffminder.com. But I did want to share with you those four main secrets for passing the PMP. Uh, follow my advice on this and you have a much better chance of becoming a certified project management professional and taking your career to the next level.